there's a long-term need for what we're doing and that isn't going to go away it, it will always be here and and I, I just think that that hopefully people will be a little bit more focused on finding a better way of doing it in the long term Welcome to the Agile Digital Transformation Podcast, where we explore different aspects of digital transformation and digital experience with your host, Tim Butera, Content and Community Manager at Agile Drop. Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Our guest today is Alex Tomczyk, co-founder and chief operations officer at Exisent, probate experts whose mission is to facilitate the management of the probate process. So the management of deceased wills uh, by leveraging digital. Welcome, Alex. It's really great to have you on the show today. Can you start yeah. off by telling us a few words about Exis and, and how it was started? I will do. It's great to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Um, yeah, so uh, Exis really came about um, by a combination of sort of personal experience of myself and my co-founder, Nick. We, uh, you know, we were both at a stage in our careers where we wanted to, to do something a bit different. I built another company, um, and X did that and was doing some consultancy and Nick had sort of stepped out after a long career in, in various financial services companies, banks primarily. Um, and we were both looking to uh, to do something a bit different. Um, and it just so happened that around that time through a series of unfortunate circumstances, um, we both uh, lost people um, for either friends um, at a relatively young age or um, or, or relatives um, in, uh, in particularly in Nick's case and, and seen through that, the the challenges that people have um, dealing with the administration of um, a bereavement at a time where, you know, our view is that people should be focusing on grieving and dealing with the family aspects of, of, of a loss. And we kind of took the view that, that actually in the 21st century really shouldn't be dealing with lots of paper and administration in a way which in, in the UK at least is, is largely based around legislation from the early 19th never mind the 20th century so so we, we thought well there's a bunch of problems here and actually with our sort of experience relative different slightly different experiences but um, with different experiences there's there's something actually that could be solved so that was the 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 idea behind it which really just solving the problem to benefit people um that have have lost someone but the more we looked into it we discovered it's a whole a whole um area which is is really you know would benefit all the participants if it could be modernized and, and improved with um, digital technology particularly managing the data flows between parties so that's where we started really from um you know our own personal experiences and uh, a desire to improve that for people in the future and it comes at a really unique time right it's it's a time where both both things are true that people are experiencing loss much more significantly than before because you know we, it's, it's it's often the case that you're not able to be with relatives in their final days because, because of COVID, because of the restrictions, uh, especially if they're in hospital due to COVID or something COVID related. And at the same time, we also have people getting used to performing everything digitally. So I'm guessing that, that uh, it was the perfect opportunity for Exisent to kind of enter the market. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, well, we started this quite a bit before COVID. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, this is something that's been a problem for a long time. And, and I think will continue to be partly due to human factors, the fact that that some people, you know, in particular, don't want to talk about their own death, or their family members don't want to talk about that prior to prior to it happening. And what some people are very well organized, they have a will, they have, um, you know, a list of all their assets and all that sort of stuff. But actually, the vast majority aren't. Certainly, you know, in terms of the, the information, the, uh, you know, I think we would always recommend that everyone, pretty much in any life stage, has a will of um, some of some kind. But you know, people weren't talking about it, so the problem's been around for a long time. Um, there's no doubt that COVID has created some um, unusual circumstances, but um, it, you know, it's it's something that, particularly in the in the, the you know in the more uh, more digital markets, if you like, the the, the that something that, that needs addressed and uh, we just took the view you know really early tw early 2019 we started uh, we took the view that actually something could be done it is true that the covid has enabled people to talk a bit more about these things and plan a bit more but you're quite right you know the, the difficulties of communication have been actually highlighted by this because things like requiring wet signatures as a very simple example but exchange of of sensitive documents and things like that have have all become much more difficult 
and in many respects you know that people talk about the innovation in um in in digital adoption you know taking a 10-year leap forward we're mm-hmm. talking on we're talking on um uh, a video platform well actually you know in business a lot of people would not have used those certainly not extensively and a lot more people using them would ever have touched one before so there's there's some things that it has has done that will that will inevitably be um uh have have made some faster progress than otherwise would have been the case. But you're right, the general trend towards more dig- digitization, people who are more used to digital tools and expect different things. You know, someone was saying to me yesterday, in, in a world where people expect to be able to book holidays via Airbnb, get an instant ride via uh, Uber, order wherever they want, delivered the next day, why should it take six to 12 or 18 months or even longer in some cases? Why should it take that time to administer an estate after someone's died that you know people are asking those questions and, and you know we're all said to be a, a, a major part of the solution we have yeah that's a great point and also you you mentioned previously that you know the time after huge loss should be reserved for griefing not for not for administration and bureaucracy absolutely that's that's actually core to, core to our um purpose it, i mean and the purpose of the business is is quite um, explicit you know our aim is to improve the experience of bereavement for everyone involved and, and that means sort of three groups of um of uh, of stakeholders but you know the core to our core to that is the fact that the, the individuals who have lost someone should get to be able to access the information they need should it, whether they're dealing with themselves or get the right professional advice and support when they need to that's really important to us at a time where you are struggling with these things you should be able to access the services that you need in a way in which suits you and then that will, you know, we also want to make it easier for all the parties involved to to interact. So we often actually we talk about three three groups, three groups of stakeholders. So there's the if you like the individuals that have lost someone, and that might be um, family members or executives of a will or or even beneficiaries of a will. We talk about the second group being um, the professional advisors that help. So in you know in in the UK that's typically solicitors, accountants, financial advisors, that sort of skilled professionals that know the process and know how it works. And then there's the institutions, the people that have some information about the estate. So that's, um, you know, banks, but also pensions, uh, insurance companies uh, and people that provide services such as um, utilities and what have you. And, and ultimately, our platform aims to sit in the middle of those three groups of stakeholders and manage those data flows to the benefit of all of them to make the process easier, reduce administration, reduce fraud, improve security, all that sort of stuff. That That's you know, our eight, our purpose is to benefit all three of those groups in that triangle. I've, I'm doing this because I like I, I describe mm-hmm. it as a triangle to benefit all of them, and and we believe that the the, the time is right, and and as importantly, the tools are available to enable that to happen now. So it's already a very very well developed and well established vision for the Axis and platform. And can I ask you uh, where are you currently with your plans, and what what are your next steps going to be? Sure. So th- we have a really strong long-term vision, which I just kind of um, outlined a bit there in terms of the problems we're trying to solve. It's things like, you know, um, the bureaucracy and the, the time it takes to communicate and, and all those sorts of things. And we've been very focused on problem solving in our definition of what we're trying to do from, from day one. We've adopted what we call a, a service design led philosophy to approach to building the, the, the platform. So, so 2019 for us was the was a year all about really understanding those problems. Um, it was about we did quite an extensive amount of work of market research and and talked to all of the different participants, those three groups of stakeholders I mentioned, and tried to understand what the challenges they were facing were. And then we formulated a a um, vision for the, the the platform, which is essentially a multi sided platform um, managing those um, managing data flows, and uh, and we. But we designed it, we did a sort of what we call the go to market strategy, essentially how we were going to execute that over uh, a number of periods of years. So that's what 2019 was about, as well as securing some funding to get on with it. 2020, although obviously the pandemic played paid a large part, we were actually largely, because we moved to remote working quite early and have continued to, to operate in that way, we largely carried on on plan. And there were three big things that we were doing in 2020. The one was build the team to execute the, um, uh, the vision. The second was to build, uh, start to build a, a brand and a marketing and sales strategy that would enable that to to happen. But but most importantly, it was to build the platform, uh, build the first versions um, of the platform, recognizing it's a multi-year journey to get to where we want to go, but to get the first version out there. So version one of the platform was made available to the that legal services part of the sector that help people administer a an estate um, after death. That was made available in Q4 last year. 
and then we'd be continually enhancing it. Um, obviously, you know, the name of this podcast includes the word agile. We're a very agile approach to, to delivering what we do, and we're iterating the functionality as we go. So that product's available and is in use by customers to manage states. In our case, these are primarily um, solicitors that are uh, assisting people at the moment. And we're gaining feedback from that, but also continually adding to the functionality. You know, there's, there's lots of, there's lots we want to do. And um, we started with something, you know, classic modern software as a service platform. You start with the basic version and iterate and add stuff as you go. So we, we're on that journey there. So that bit's um, in place. The second bit um, is the, is the, the, the side, which is the institutions. And we're in pilot at the moment with an organization called the Scottish Building Society to build that side of the platform and talking to a number of other um, significant financial institutions, um, primarily about pilots with them to make sure that we get that functionality right. Again, very service design led, understanding their problems, making sure that there's an appropriate driver, which for most of those institutions is really very much all around improving customer service, because that's really important to um, a lot of them. And it's something that in the bereavement stage, you just have to look at the press and you, you know that um, that's not been done very well historically. So um, a lot of them are looking to improve, uh, which is obviously a good thing. So um, understanding that, how it can affect their customer journeys um, is, is really important. But also there's efficiency and cost reduction, which is really important for a business case, for those organizations as well. So we understand all of that and building that in mind. And that all the time we're doing this, we're adding other things to the platform. So the platform is cloud native, API first. So the aim is to, you know, we have, we're not shy. We're not going to build everything ourselves. We'll be plugging into uh, a number of other uh, um, organizations or tools to enable the overall effect. We want to get to the benefit for the individuals as, as quickly as we can, achieve our purposes as quickly as we can. So we'll, we'll you know, we, it was natural for us to build in that way so that we can, um, we can execute as quickly as we can to help people fundamentally. So yeah, that's so that was so 2019. Understand the problem, come up with a plan. 2020, you know, release the first version and start learning it for real. 2021 and beyond, iteratively improve the functionality of the platform and bring more people onto it fundamentally. And yes, yeah, speaking of integrations, uh, 2021 is also proving to be a very successful and groundbreaking year for you in terms of the partnerships that you're forming. Am I correct? Uh, if I remember correctly, you recently announced partnerships with several firms with both uh, Arkan Legal and Experian, right? That's right. Yeah, for, for two, well, in fact, you, you, they're very, very nicely linked, Tim. Yes, <laughs> um, um, yeah, it's back to our philosophy of, of, of integrating um, key people. So Arkin's a really interesting one. So Arkin are um, a legal, uh, leading international provider of digital will writing um, software. And this comes to, you know, although our platform at the moment and what I've really talked about, it very much focuses on the estate administration, the probate part of and state administration it's obvious that there's things that people can do prior to death around the time of death and and, and post-death and we very much focus on that post-death people at the moment but the partnership with arkin is about connecting pre and post-death seamless um, data transfer so that again that we're looking it's about trying to remove friction from the process and we're working with them to work out how in fact the information that's gathered in their um, tools that their customers have can be seamlessly transferred to our platform to I mean, obviously with permissions and all that sort of stuff um, <laughs> to uh, uh, to to enable that the estate settlement after someone has unfortunately died um, to much more. So that's a real connecting up the ecosystem piece, and that's you know uh, that's another uh, another part of it. The experience thing speaks to uh, that part. Should really speaks to the core of what we are doing, which is that you know managing that data flow between, uh, in the triangle. Because one of the, you know, we've done extensive research, I said, and, and, and one of the things that we found is that one of the frustrations people have is finding out the information about the assets and liabilities of the platform. So what we're, um, what we're going to do with Experian is use their data, I mean, obviously a huge data set, um, um, uh, use their data to ease that process and enable the estate to be a, a sort of basic parameter to be established very, very quickly. We're already integrating with other data sources in the platform to get, for example, an indicative valuations of houses and cars and, and what have you. But this is just to bring another level of granularity. And, and as an example of, you know, of where we're the direction of travel in terms of partnerships, data integration, they're two really good examples and strategically important to us, but, you know, of huge value. We, I was going to say we hope, but hope's not the right word because we've talked to a lot of people before we've gone embarked on them. <laughs> we, we expect um, uh, once they're there as well. Yeah, it's really, uh, really a huge deal for for the field, basically, uh, and for Axis, and obviously, and for the field as well, since it's a huge, uh, a huge groundbreaking move for the for the whole industry, basically. 
Yeah, I mean, our our, our aim ultimately is is we've likened ourselves. Uh, you know, if you think of us, us in a few years, our, our aim is is to to be if you're a bit like the plumbing that sits in the background. You don't think about your plumbing and how the water gets around, mm. and you don't even necessarily know who who did the plumbing or puts the pipes in um, pipe work in place. But ultimately, to enable the whole process to work much better, and and that's really what we want to do. It, it's an ambitious vision. It you know if you think about that in you know we're currently really only dealing with the uk but you know the same problems exist we um we are, are believe and and in different forms because obviously different legal jurisdictions and different approaches in other countries as well so there's there's um there's an ambition definitely to um to to grow that internationally as well so yeah fairly um fairly interesting times don't we don't you know we're pretty busy yeah, and a really great analogy with the plumbing. It's like, yeah, as you said, something that you shouldn't even think about, but it just works and it works. It's just part of the whole infrastructure, right? And this is basically what it's becoming, part of the digital infrastructure. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. You know, it's funny, I I, I wrote very early days when I just updated my LinkedIn profile to 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 say that Nick and I were embarking on X's end. I, I, said, I, I said something like, I forget the exact wording, you could probably look it up, but... Um, <laughs> Something like, you know, I, I expect us to benefit people who will never know who we are because, you know, they the, the legal services firms, for example, their customers don't know what necessarily what software they're they're using mm-hmm. to make them um, to, to manage their estate. Well, but they'll get benefit from it because the 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 legal services firms will be able to do things more efficiently, better and deliver a better customer service as well. And and likewise, the institutions will will, will benefit, but, you know, their customers won't know um, uh, won't know who we are. So, you know. I, I quite like that. I, I'm uh, the sort of the the doing doing good, generally good in the in the world bit of me really sort of that appeals. This reminds me of that quote, you know, the best user experience is invisible, basically. I've not heard that quote, but yeah, I can absolutely I can align with that definitely. Mm-hmm. Okay, so maybe now we already talked about uh, what the platform will do for your users, but maybe maybe if we look at it from the other direction. So, what are the common challenges and like the the biggest pains that that people who are in those situations typically have that your integrated platform will basically eliminate or or solve for them? Cool, that's no, a really good question, and, and you know, I said it's. it's it's kind of where we started from, um, mm-hmm. looking at the the, the pain. So, w- what do people typically find? They typically find that the 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 the, the process is is very time consuming. Um, it involves a lot of administration, a lot of paperwork. Um, that if you're an individual experiencing this for the first time, or even the second or third time, you, you don't really know your way around. Mm-hmm. Um, there's uh, it's it's so it's it's opaque and it's time consuming, and there's a lot of of sending of copies of things to people in the post um, <laughs> genuinely that's that's how the, the the process works and and whilst there have been some um improvements uh, um over the last wee while through some of the key institutions you have to engage with um such as um, hmrc and the courts services in the various different jurisdictions um in the uk the, the fact is it's still very much based in and around um, uh, producing paper, so those things frustrate individuals, and uh, equally they they frustrate the professionals that that deal with it on a day to day basis. And a clear feedback from um, from estate administration, probate people, professionals has been, why does it have to take this long? You know, it, it, they, I want to do a better job for my for my for my clients. Um, it's it's just really it's it's tremendously frustrating and. One of the other big frustrations that the feedback that we got back from them was the amount of time it takes to communicate with institutions. So a prof- even a professional person, qualified solicitor possibly, or, or someone just, you know, a probate practitioner from uh, paralegal or something like that, um, communicating with all of the different accounts um, that uh, an individual might have had. Now, and also this is a very interesting trend. You talked about sort of longer term global trends earlier. And one of them is an increased fragmentation of our lives. We have, um, you know, you know, savings account here, pension there, all that sort of stuff. So actually the trend is it become, become more complex um, rather than less in terms of um, those states. So the amount of time taken to, to establish whether someone has an account in a particular organisation, confirm that you're the person that um, is able to deal with that, that is appropriately authorised by the estate to do that, and then get the information 
uh, about the um, the account or asset or or liability, whatever it is, confirm what that was on the date of death, and then work through all of the estate administration work, work out um, the the net tax, for example, submit the tax forms, which have got to be done in paper. Although there was an announcement earlier this year, obviously that they'll they'll look to eliminate some of those or, or, or digitize and then submit all of those to the various different um, places to, to get your grant of um, uh, a probate and then administer all of the actual incoming cash and that sort of that's all done largely manually and, and often sent through paper. We did actually we did a we did a lot of that work in 2019 but we recently commissioned a, research, a study which we published in I'm going to say late March might might have been early um, April called the bereavement index, which is um, we hope a landmark a piece of uh, study that is going to that we're going to do every year to really uh, to get a really wide view. It's a quite extensive survey, a really wide view of all these problems. And and you know the, these these messages come back time and time again. It's about time for responses. It's about duplication of effort. It's about um, lack of clarity. So the aim is that we. Re, you know, reduce all that. We're not going to do it all overnight. We'd have a magic wand, um, <laughs> but but we are going to. Um, we you know we, we very much intend to reduce all of that as much as is humanly um, uh, and in fact digitally possible over the um, over the next wee while. Is that right? Does that sort of summarise it? I think it's fair, uh, there's a lot of problems, but that's the sort of the high level version. Yeah, yeah, de definitely. I mean, I think you really hit the mark there. And for a moment there, I I have to admit that I forgot that uh, this was about the paper way of doing these processes so i was like okay you know if this is done digitally it doesn't actually sound that bad but then i remembered oh wait this is actually all has to be done through paper through paperwork through the mail and you know then it got me thinking typically even in those rare cases where this was done digitally it was typically done you know through excel sheets or something like that probably yeah you're right um there's you know excel sheets or do or documents stored on um on a shared drive or something mm -hmm. like that i mean there's you know there's there's a lot of that but uh, you know it, particularly in the in the sort of uh, at the individual or the, or for the um estate uh, at the estate sort of professionals end but also in in your large organizations they they've got some particular challenges as well you know they've they have also had a relationship with imagine just being a bank for example with a savings account they've got had a relationship with the person that's died so they don't know the person that's necessarily approaching them so they've got to for obviously anti-fraud and, and um, type reasons they've got to validate the that uh, the person has um, died they've got to validate that the, the, the person approaching them is who they say they are and they are authorized to to act on behalf of the estate and then they've got to manage the communication to and flow and and and, and they potentially do, then they're doing that across you know this you know, obviously covid has been a little bit exception there's been a bit of a spike of of deaths in in 2020 and early 21 mm. unfortunately but you know the only certain thing is that we will all one day um die and, and therefore um there's a consistent workload that they have to do and, and typically they're doing that without all of the tools um available so we're, we're solving problems on all sides of of that stakeholder and, and yes it's very heavily paper driven at the moment and you know we'd like to be part of that solution uh, a major part of the solution solving that and yes so as we said in the beginning covid has definitely had a huge impact on this field both in terms of the digitalization and in terms of uh, as you just said the increased number of deaths in 2020 which i don't know the statistics but i guess is is diminished this year due to the protection that the vaccines offer and and everything but still uh obviously the short-term effect of covid on on this field and on axis and is obvious but what about long-term effects i think we touched upon briefly upon this in the intro but uh maybe do you have any more thoughts yeah sure i mean the, the short-term effects have obviously produced the spike and that's created a backlog um mm -hmm. because the organizations that we're dealing with, um, whether that be um, uh, the court service or um, uh, or HMRC, we weren't really expecting um, uh, that, and so there is a there is a substantial backlog, and at a time where actually there were some changes going about, particularly in England and Wales, in the way in which that was uh, the court service were managing that, that it was it's created quite a substantial backlog and a problem, um, and there's you know you just have to read a few forum to for to to understand what that um, has caused as an individual impact on people. So the so the um, the short term has definitely been something, and and but the the longer term, I mean, the, the the vision for this platform came about before COVID was even a word that anyone knew, uh, and therefore that you know there's a long term need for what we're doing, 
um, and that isn't going to go away. It, it will always be here, and and I just think that uh, that hopefully people will be a little bit more focused on finding a better way of doing it um, in the long term. And certainly, you know, in in the conversations um, that we've had with um, you know partners that we've, we've talked about, um, Arkin and Experian, but also other people involved in the space, whether they be uh, charities that are assisting the bereaved or um, the professional bodies that that um, uh, people. Um, are accredited by and such like there's a real um, there's a real focus on uh, on on fixing the stuff for the long term and, and a really great attitude towards that so you know we're really positive and, and pleased but I think that the fact that it's come up the agenda as a result of COVID for me is the is the most important long-term effect and, and people will be looking at, um, at how they manage this for the future so I, I think that's 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 the key and I actually funny enough on the personal side I think I hope people talk about um, death a bit more and preparing for it and have conversations within their families make sure they've got wills all those sorts of good things because that will help them and their families in the uh, in the future there's quite a few other tools that are coming out as well which will help with people to plan that there's there's other companies working in the space um, at the pre-death sort of life organization side of life um, as well which is quite interesting digitizing that um, uh, that piece uh, so you know the I, I just hope the the overall ecosystem will, will improve as well and then people talk about it. So this was, uh, this was kind of paving the way for future innovation in this particular field in essence. Well, it's, it's, I'm, 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 I'm really passionate about that. I mean, my whole working career, as you can tell, I'm, I'm uh, no longer in my 20s. My whole working career has been about technology innovation in a variety of different sectors and business building and making that a success. And it's been really interesting to see how different sectors um, you know, have a have their moment where it where the the the, the heat of of technological uh, evolution um, creates some some fundamental change in that sector, and you know all the, you know there's, there's lots of case studies around the world about that. But I, I think um, you know we describe ourselves, and I've, I've done quite a lot of work in the fintech space in the past, and and prior to that, I, I, my first sort of involvement in technology innovation was in the 90s when I ran what was the UK's first ever corporate venturing scheme for a big FTSE 100 company investing in technology in a whole variety of different sectors and you know you see how different sectors find a time where the tools and the techniques but more perhaps as importantly the customer demand for these for improvement um, reaches a, a tipping point and uh, we sort of think ourselves as sort of legal tech fintech hybrid uh, because of the natures of the, of the three sides of our um, of our platform and uh, you know it's certainly fintech is uh, is a subject that, that people know about now but legal tech innovation is perhaps a little bit further behind and if you think back into the past things like you know the, the sort of dot com boom but biotech and and all these sorts of things that have have um have had a really a focus in the public mind as well as in the business mind they're, they're driven by a bunch of things one of them is a desire to improve customer service one of them is a desire uh, people's demand for a, a change in the type of services they want but there's also some really hard those businessy things such as you know organizations wanting to improve costs innovators in the sector uh, organizations want to increase their revenues organizations wanting to uh, reduce their uh, their environmental impact mm-hmm. or um, actually to increase their market share and it's these kinds of sort of business drivers that that often drive innovation but i think in this particular case it's also a wider group of of um, socioeconomic but particularly um, personal drivers such as you know a growing in, um, in desire to do things more holistically to think wider about people and the planet uh, and digital access as well so um, education I mean for, for us has always been a really important one and we you know we try and make sure that our team are continually developing as well but it's, it's all of those things coming together I think to, to help drive innovation I just think it, it's, it's this sector's particular time or this space is subject's particular time because there's a number of strictly of, of sectors involved um, it's this particular space is time um, to, to to see um, a, a step change in in what in what's going on. It's been around for a long time, and I think the you know going back to what we said a minute ago, the the, the fact that people are now talking about it will help. Yep, I agree one hundred percent. I think that this is definitely a field where where we're likely to see much more innovation in the near future, and probably one of the fields that's likely to to experience still massive change, uh, even more so than it already has. So, yeah, uh, excited yep. to see how accident will factor into all of this. Thank you. I'm, we're we're we are very we're very obviously very positive about making an impact, but we're excited as well. You know, <laughs> it's um, whilst it's a very serious subject matter. 
we can see the potential to make a real uh, a real difference and that 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 gives us energy you know <laughs> nice I, I wish you the best of luck with that uh, both currently and in all your future endeavors thank you thank you very much Tim so that's all for my questions just before we wrap up our call if our listeners want to reach out to you or if they want to learn more about access and where can they reach you um, of course, there's a, a number of ways. I'm glad you asked that question. Um, there's there's uh, mm-hmm. obviously our website, exizent.com, E-X-I-Z-E-N-T.com. Contact me directly and, you know, collect on, on LinkedIn or um, or whatever. Um, we also have um, some specific, obviously, if, if someone works in the space and wants to make use of the platform, we're very happy to have them sign up as a customer. We, we really have a program of making sure we get feedback from our customers to help improve the product as well. So that's a really, that's a great, being a customer browser is a great help from a number of angles, but helps us with that product direction and roadmap and, and stuff as well. If someone isn't, doesn't able or doesn't want to do that, we have a, a research group as well, which is um, deliberately aimed at people who are customers and who are, who are not likely to just know the space well. And that's something else that, that um, people can sign up for, or, or just, you know, frankly, follow us on LinkedIn and, and, um, and comment and, and like, they're all, they're all good ways. We're, you know, we're, we're, we've been hugely pleased with the support we've had by the sector and people elsewhere who aren't involved in the sector who just realise it's a, it's a really good idea that who, who you know, we think that the time has come for it. So any of those or, or all of those um, you know, would be great. Great. Thanks again so much, Alex, for a very insightful conversation. I really enjoyed speaking with you today. Thanks, Tim. So I've enjoyed speaking to you too. Well, to our listeners, that's all for this episode. Have a great day, everyone, and stay safe. Thanks for tuning in. If you'd like to check out our other episodes, you can find all of them at agiledrop.com slash podcast, as well as on all the most popular podcasting platforms. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new episodes. And don't forget to share the podcast with your friends and colleagues.